Whenever I have a second order tensor, in our case, I'm interested in the gradient of the formation tensor, F. This second order tensor can be always decomposed as the product, the dot product, of two tensors. Q times U, or B times Q. So look that there are here, so far I have introduced Q in both expressions, and also one tensor which is called U, which is at the right hand side, and one tensor which is called B, which is at the left hand side. Okay? So the decomposition of the original tensor in Q, Q is something that mathematicians would say it's an orthogonal tensor or an orthogonal matrix. Okay, now let's, let's now we'll, we'll say something. What does that mean for we, for, for engineers? Mathematicians say, okay, Q is an orthogonal tensor which has this property as orthogonal second order tensor that Q transpose times Q is equal to Q times Q transpose is equal to unity. In other words, it's a tensor whose inverse is its transpose. That's what is called the, um, an orthogonal tensor for a mathematician. For a mathematician. We'll see that we now will interpret that from the physical point of view. And then the theorem says any second order tensor, typically F, can be decomposed as the product of an orthogonal tensor times another tensor U or another tensor B times an orthogonal tensor Q. That is called the left polar, the, the, the right polar decomposition because that tensor is at the right and this is called the left polar decomposition. And this Q and U, of course, can be computed in terms of F. For instance, U is the square root of F transpose times F. Or B is the square root of F times F transpose. Look, maybe now you should know what is, uh, what does F, F transpose times F mean? How do you take the square root of a tensor? Okay? Well, we'll go back to that. It's something is mathem mathematics. But what we do is that we change the coordinates until th this tensor is diagonal diagonalized. And then we just take the, the, the roots of the diagonal and then we, we just undo the, the changes. So there is a mathematical expression to compute the square root that is a notation, the square root of this product. Okay? So according to a mathematician, the, the second, the polar decomposition says the gradient of the formation tensor F can be decomposed according to the polar decomposition theorem into a orthogonal tensor times another tensor U or to another tensor B times an orthogonal tensor. This is called the rotation tensor. Now I'm introducing a physical word, rotation tensor. Why do we call that rotation? I anticipate, because that is going to inform about rotations. U is called the material stretch tensor. Why do I use the word stretch? Because information about the stretches is in there. And B is also a stretch tensor, because all the stretches are there. In other words, this is a way to separate. In tensor F, I told you that tensor F, th th there is too much information in tensor F. There is information about what happens on rigid body motions with no changes of angles and distances. So all this information, I anticipate, is going to be contained in that. That is not saying nothing for us. The information of the changes of uh, distance and angles is contained either in this U or in this V. Okay. Before, now you believe me that. You believe that it is possible to do that. And it's possible to compute Q, it's possible to compute U, it's possible to compute B. Okay? You have to believe that, and that is what uh, I'm requesting. Let me say something about the meaning of a, a tensor that mathematically is orthogonal. So Q times Q transpose is equal to 1. What is the meaning of that, physically? Well, imagine that I have one second order tensor, which is an orthogonal tensor. And I do the transformation. For every vector x multiplied by this q, I obtain a vector y. I want to see what is the norm, the, the norm of the transform vector y, square. 
Okay, in order to do that, I do that dot product of i times one itself, that is in matrix form, done by transposing the first and multiplying by the second. But if the vector is defined by this transformation, this is qx transposed times qx. To do that, I just to do x q transpose, transpose the, the order, and I now do the operations. By the way, q, I said that q is a tensor which is orthogonal. So how much is q transpose times q? The identity, by definition. That is not any tensor. Q is a, the, the postulate is that is an orthogonal tensor. So this term is the unit tensor. And I multiply x times u and times x, I obtain the same x is x times x, which is the norm of the original vector. So this simple line proves that if q is an orthogonal tensor, then any transformation y equal q times x keeps the distances, keeps the length of the transform vector. That is not equal to this, but the length of that is equal to the length of this. Okay? Okay, that's interesting. That's why this Q is called a rotation. Well, more than this. Because this transformation also keeps the angles. Also keeps angles. Now, let's consider if I just want to compute what is the angle of vector A1 and A2, I just can resort to the definition of the scalar product, the dot product. If I do the dot product of these two vectors and divide by the modulus, I would obtain the angle formed by the two vectors. Okay? So let's do that. I1 is qx1 transposed, x1 q transposed, time a2, y2, which is q times x2. Again, I invoke the orthogonality, so this is the unity, so this is x1 times x2, divided by the, now since the norms are preserved, this is the norm of x1 times the norm of x2, and this is known. And nothing else than the original cosinus of angle. So, now that we know what is the meaning of that, let's go back to the polar decomposition. So the polar decomposition theorem says that if I have a deformation, look, I have, here this is quite well, well expressed. Imagine, imagine that you have a body here, which is a, and a reference configuration. And now, of course, I just produce a motion characterized in terms of changes of positions, angles, and distances by the gradient of the formation tensor. So that body deforms in that term, and in this way, he has experienced some rotations, some stretches, some changes of distances, some changes of, ang of angles. Everything is in here. But this, the composition, <coughs> says the following. This decomposition says the following. Let's look, for instance, to the second one. I know that every differential of x, the, pos the, the, the relative position of two particles, can be, according to the fundamental formula of the formation, as capital F times differential of x. But capital F is now decomposed into B, B times Q. And now, this operation can be explained in two parts. First, I multiply q times differential of x, and the result that is multiplied by b. So how can this be interp interpreted? Look, it's like, first, I take any differential of x here, any relative position of two particles, and then I multiply by q. If I do that for all particles, what I'm doing with that? A rotation. A rotation. A rigid body rotation. OK? So I obtain that. What about the changes of angles and distances about that? Zero. There won't be, there won't be any change of uh, distances. What about, by the way, what about the strain measures here? How would they, if I computed the strain measures here, how much would they be? Zero. Because there is no strain and, and, and no, no change of angles and distances. And after that, to the result, that's a composition. So to that result, not to the original one, eh? to that result, I multiply by b. <coughs> so what is the effect of multiplying that result times b? Every transform vector q differential of x in here times 
the left stretch tensor, capital V. The rest, everything that has to do with changes of angles and distances. So that tells me that we can consider physically what happens along the formation of any body, any structure, anything that we want to study, as a composition, composition, which first involves a rotation, a translation and a rotation, a, a shifting and a rotation, which produces no real strains and no real stresses. And independently of how much is this length, this one effect, uh, this, this rotation, this one affect the final strains and then the final stresses. And then on this result, I apply some stretches, B, which in turn, this B is where the strain measures are involved. Okay? So I can interpret then the, 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 the deformation as a composition. Composition. So first, I produce a rotation, and on the results, I produce a stretching. Okay? I could do the opposite also. Let's consider now that the composition, f as q times u. So differential of x can be f, which is q times u, times the capital differential of x. Now I group these two terms, and I consider that first I apply something, u, which is responsible for the stretches. So that's what is expressed here. First I apply the stretches through this u, so all the strain measures, all the strains are applied here. And then to the result, I, uh, to the result we, I, I apply a Q, which is a rotation. The result is the same. The final result is the same. But now is what I said before. I can consider that the, the formation of this body can be decomposed either, either in a rotation and then a deformation or in a deformation and then a rotation. Rotation, when I say rotation, if I involve any constant displacement here, it doesn't change anything. Okay? So this is a concept which is important. 